Hi everyone and welcome to this introduction around how to use both Clo and Rhino 3D and Grasshopper to create uh, randomized patterns either on grids or as points that you could put circles on or other shapes on in order to cut out uh, these, these uh, computationally designed patterns onto your Clo model and then um, you know, take them for fabrication later on. So what I'll just introduce you to here is we've got this active wear um, outfit and we've got the, the top here, but we're gonna be working down on the pants, but I'll just show you here in the top section, we've got this uh, randomized uh, pattern on a grid. And this pattern is, uh, thicker and denser in these hexagon grids at the middle and then they thin down and open up as they go further away from a central uh, attractor point. So what we'll be looking at is uh, using these panels, predominantly this panel here, um, to, to look at putting some perforations in some random perforations. I'll also be doing that here on this object. Okay, so here's an example of um, leggings. I'll go back <laughs> where there is a laser cut pattern um, put into the leggings. Uh, I've got another example here of um, patterns that have been put into leggings, and uh, you know there's a number of those um, different types of um, laser cut patterns that are put in. Uh, and how can we do that? How can we create them where they're probably a little bit more interesting than just a random series of different size holes, uh, you know, on a very particular line set? You can do this quite quickly, uh, you know, in Illustrator or another program, but we're going to show you how to mix it up and create lots of quick variation. So if we come back into code, what we're going to do is uh, we just basically export the whole pattern as a DXF and we export it over to Rhino and we've imported our pattern here into into Rhino and uh, if I turn this on we can see the grid pattern here that we made for the back of the top um, but importantly what we're going to look at today is here these holes. So we're going to laser cut these holes and we need to fit them within the pattern. And what we're going to do is we've basically we've got an, an attractor in the middle. Then we're randomizing a number of points inside uh, this pattern. We're putting a circle on it. We're then varying the size of the holes. So here from the center, the holes get smaller the further away they go from both sides of this uh, attractor line that's in the middle here. And then also what we're doing is we're trimming uh, points away a certain distance from the edge of the pattern. The other thing that we're doing is that we're keeping these points a certain distance away from each other so that we keep enough material um, that the pattern will stay stable when we laser cut the holes into the particular uh, fabric that you might be using, uh, like a lycra uh, material. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you the script. So here, this is the script for the top pattern, and what this script does is effectively uses a different variation of either diamonds, uh, triangle panels, hexagon cells, or triangular panels, again, in different ways, to generate the pattern. And what this one here is, is this hexagon cell pattern uh, varied a little bit in its parameter to give it a slightly different shape. And what we're doing is we're attracting a series of um, points here. We're remapping the values of a line. And then we're basically saying keep the lines that sit inside we're drawing a little rectangle on those lines and then we're filleting them and then we're culling the pattern at a certain distance and then here we're then baking out that uh, result 
um, into here, layer 8. Um, Chloe uses there are specific uh, numbers for layers um, when, it, when it imports things, but here we're just putting it back out into layer 8. Uh, layer 8 is internal geometry, but it doesn't really matter um, for this exercise. Okay, so we've gone through that, um, and I'll just basically show you, I think it's the, it's the bottom one here. So what we're, what we're doing is, um, I'm just going to turn layer 8 off, is we've got these points here, and we, we can vary the number of points. So here you can see the pattern changing, the less number of points we put in, and we can pack more points in or less points in. Here we can see these points. So what's really nice is now we've got this randomized uh, pattern is that we can change the seed value and then the pattern will update and randomize into the shape. So you can get lots of different outputs quite quickly, which is very helpful when you're doing so when you're generating lots of different types of uh, data sets for different designs. Here what we're doing is we're adjusting the spacing between the points. So if we drop this down, you can see the points will pack much closer to each other, and then we're opening it up and the points space further away from each other. And this allows us to get the distance between the centers to be a certain uh, distance, including the radius of the circle and that, that distance. So then what we're doing is we've got our point attractor, we're saying, you know, vary the size of the holes on the point attractor, both down and up. And then we've got our external edge here, and we're culling all the, all the points that are close to that edge. So here we've got a distance that we're culling. So if I drop this down to zero, you'll notice that there are lots of points around the edge line. And if I pull this up, we can bring those points away and you can find a sweet point that you want it gets you the right type of geometry to allow you then when you've got your seam offset that you'll, you know, your design will work in the required way that you want and then we can bake that out onto this geometry okay so once we've baked that out we can save it and then we can bring it back over into uh, Clo. So what we can do in Clo is I've created a new fabric and we can bring uh, this um, drawing in now by basically going File, Import, Add, and then we're going to add this pattern and go OK. Alright, so now we've imported our pattern and we can see we've got our holes and we've got our edge. So what we'll do now is we've, we've got the edge, we can replace this part here with this one and we can cut our holes out. So what's, what's really cool is here is we can select these and we can right click and say uh, convert to hole and then we can drag across a whole lot of them and say convert to hole and we can basically select all of them and convert them to hole. All right, and we've converted them all to hole. And if we come out and look at our pattern, We can see here that we've got all the holes and uh, we've got our pattern ready to sew back in and replace this piece here with that one. Okay, so we've uh, re stitched this back in and whoops, we can see here that if I Zoom in and show the stitching. You can see here that we've stitched this to here, 
We've stitched this center line through here, and then there's a little bit of material here that we've stitched in here. So we've got that panel all stitched in, and there are these sections. So, for example, I could do segment stitching, then we'd have that whole segment selected in one go, but we're not. We've done other. We've used the free sewing method and now we've got this panel in here and we can see that the panel has the texture that we created here in Rhino that we've got that back in our clove pattern. So there you go, uh, that's a way of putting it together. Um, if you'd be interested in more detail uh, you can look at the links below to my Patreon page and I'll have the script uh, and uh, discuss the scripts and how they work, um, discuss how to get really nice quality uh, geometry so that it all cuts really well and that you can take the pattern and then um, use it in uh, other methods like with laser cutting etc. So thanks everyone and I hope that this video has been useful for you.